wondering if you think that you made a mistake in ex either in exclusively using your private email. Hillary Clinton has been asked that question since 2015, when the New York Times first reported her use of a private email server as Secretary of State. Just one of many bombshell revelations that have rocked the election campaign. But it's the investigative reporting around Clinton's opponent that has dominated news coverage. What is your tax rate? Uh, it's none of your business. You tried to arrange for dealings in Cuba. And they Just a small sample of what journalists like the Washington Post David Fahrenholt have unearthed about Donald Trump's public dealings and private life. Fahrenholt contacted every charity Trump claimed had benefited from him or his foundation. The work took months but yielded dizzying headlines. It's no surprise that the reaction to Fahrenholt's findings has been as polarized as the campaign itself. Well, this is the Washington Post who's rabidly looking for something to take Mr. Trump that down. That doesn't we mean have to it's not true. That. Washington Post reporter who seems a little obsessed with Donald Trump these days. Criticism of a newspaper that's seen by many as the vanguard of investigative journalism, famous for breaking the Watergate scandal. Will the investigative journalism that's been done during this campaign ultimately come to be seen in the same celebrated light? So, David, let me start there. Do you think that the journalism being done now is going to be remembered as hitting the high water mark or, or falling short of that? I don't think people generally remember campaign coverage as being in any great high water mark of journalism. It's too fast moving and there's often not a lot of not enough focus on any one particular thing. But there have been some really good uh, things in this campaign. A lot of instances where people have focused on one topic, particularly in Trump or Clinton's uh, background. That Times story you mentioned, this New York Times uh, story that discovered Clinton's private email server uh, last year, that was a big deal. Their story on uh, Trump's tax returns that were mailed to them anonymously, anonymously was a big deal. There's been others that have kind of changed the campaign, uh, but nothing like Watergate that actually brought down a sitting president. Let's talk about the journalism that you did. And, and it's interesting because a lot of people are holding it up as exactly this is what investigative journalism is. You actually pick up the phone and you start doing some research. So tell me what you did and, and what do you think about the fact that people are talking about it as an example of things that, frankly, we should all be doing all the time? Well, that part is extremely flattering. For me, what's important here was that Trump holds so many important things about himself. It keeps them private. It doesn't tell you. You have to trust him. Uh, what are his debts? What does he pay in taxes? How much money is he actually worth? Uh, the good thing for me about the, the studying his charity was that there's actually another party in the transaction. You can call somebody and find out whether Donald Trump lived up to his promises. And specifically, you can call the charities that he uh, promised to help or that he might have been helping to see, well, okay, if Donald Trump has been doing what he said he did, there should be tens of millions of dollars out there in the hands of charities and grateful charities saying, thank you, Donald Trump, that I could find. Uh, so that's what I said to do was to find outsiders who could check uh, something very important about Donald Trump. And what did you find ultimately? So I called, I've now called more than 430 charities, and these are charities that seemed close to Trump. The Trump people haven't co cooperated at all. They haven't given me a list of the charities Trump helped. They've just said, oh, he gives tens of millions of dollars and it's out there someplace. I've kind of reverse engineered that list. I've got to 430 charities, and all those phone calls have found one gift, one gift out of Trump's own pocket between 2008 and May of this year. That was a gift for less than $10,000 in 2009. That's the only gift that I've found out of his own pocket when there's supposed to be tens of millions out there. It's incredible, and, and it is good work. And I'm wondering, though, if you think the level of scrutiny that's been brought to both these people will continue past Tuesday, in particular focused on whomever wins, or is there going to be a sense of, you got to go hands off now because they've been chosen by the people. I don't think that will happen in either case. I think either one of these these candidates is likely to face uh, probably renewed scrutiny if they win because there'll be a Congress, especially Clinton. You, she will probably have a Republican Congress in, interested in investigating her. Uh, if Clint, if Trump wins, I think there'll be even more people out there investigating him because people will now realize, wow, he's going to be the president. We need to learn more about his background and his his uh, relationships. Where are you going to be Tuesday night? I'll be here. I, my job is to write the web story that will uh, tell people when the race has been called for Clinton or for Trump. Uh, so one of the jobs in the next few days is to pre-write the long story that says Clinton wins and the long one that says Trump wins so we can just slap it on there. I don't have to write it on the fly uh, when the race is called. And just make sure you press send on the right one. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, David. Thank you.